Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be comparing all the coffee brewing methods I've used over the last couple of years and let you know why I only really use my semi-automatic espresso machine. I'm going to be rating them based on cost, ease of use, customizability, and taste. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to be using the same coffee, for all three methods, which is a coffee roasted locally here in Zurich. The mocha pot is one of the cheapest options on the market and depending on where you are in the world, very accessible too. You fill up the bottom with hot water, fill the basket with coffee grounds, and then place it over a heat source. You wait until the bottom chamber gets pressurized, which forces the water from the bottom up through the bed of coffee and then into the chamber, which collects it at the top. The mocha pots come in a range of sizes and they're usually quoted in cups, which refer to a small Italian style espresso cup. Mine is a three cup mocha pot, which is also induction friendly and costs about $25. So this is pretty cost effective. Usually people use store-bought coffee, which is pre-ground to the right size. But obviously if you want to level up your coffee game, you should always grind fresh beans from scratch. I use the Hario Mini Slim Pro and it takes around 30 seconds to grind 20 grams of coffee. This works for around one or two people, but if you want to serve more people, you either have to start the whole process again, which involves cooling down the mocha pot and then getting it heated up again, or you can buy a bigger size. Usually they go up to about 10 cups, which should serve enough for a party. The mocha has a really short learning curve. The only variable that you really need to adjust is the grind size. So if you notice that the brewing is stalling, for example, if it's coming out too slowly or the coffee that's coming out is really black and dark, then you need to grind coarser. But if your coffee is coming out very quickly and spurting, then you will need to grind finer. When the mocha is brewing, the flow rate should be steady. And when the coffee coming out turns from a dark brown to a light brown to a blonde, and then at that point, you will need to turn off the heat source and let the mocha pot uh, finish brewing off the heat. In terms of customizability, you can obviously add milk or steam milk and sugar is optional here, but there aren't really many other options. Here. The taste is obviously gonna depend on the coffee, but since the mocha pot brews at around one to two bars of pressure, it's not going to be as strong as espresso, which is brewed around nine bars of pressure. Therefore, if you do like much stronger drinks like I do, the mocha pot is only gonna get you so far in terms of hitting that really strong flavor and caffeine hit that we might be looking for in the morning or the afternoon. Overall, I generally do like slightly longer drinks. And so if I add water to my uh, mocha pot coffee, it's gonna be a little too weak than what I prefer. So generally, this is not a method that I enjoy the most. The second method of brewing coffee that I've played with over the last couple of years is the Hario V60. It is a cult favorite and it's gained huge popularity over the last couple of years and I can definitely see why. It's essentially a cone which lets you put a paper or metal filter on top, your coffee grounds and then water over a period of time. Depending on how fine or coarse you grind your coffee beans and also how quickly or slowly you add your water, you can extract different flavors from this method of brewing. The Hari V60 is generally very cheap and the size two plastic model that I have costs under $10. The paper filters are also very cheap and you can customize the cone with different materials like metal and ceramic. You can also get a fancy gooseneck kettle like I do here, but obviously that's not necessary. All you need to do is really have uh, a kettle that allows you to pour at a reasonable steady flow rate. To use the Hario V60, first you need to set a filter on top of it. In this case, I'm using a paper filter and rinse the paper filter out and you can dump that water out uh, afterwards. Then you can add your coffee grounds. Generally the grind size is similar to what I use with the mock pot although you can grind slightly finer if you find that the grind is, is too fast. There are also many recipes out there. I'll link down below a comparison of the most popular ones from European coffee. Generally, I follow James Hoffman's recipe, which is kind of the easiest to remember in my head. So generally for one person, I usually grind 18 grams of coffee for a final brew of about 250 grams. And what we'll do is put the grounds in, bloom with double the amount of water, so 36 grams for about 30 to 45 seconds. And then we'll add water up to 150 grams in the next minute or so. And then the rest of the water up to 250 grams in the next minute. So the total brew time should be between two minutes 45 and about three minutes if you aren't really hitting that you might need to grind finer and adjust from there overall the v60 is really easy to use and you can really get into a rabbit hole researching all the different methods and ways of actually pouring the water and distributing the coffee beans what i don't like about this method is that it's not really customizable essentially this is a filter coffee and it is generally enjoyed as black and long and so there aren't many options in terms of customizability if you've watched this far, then you'll probably be able to guess why I prefer using my semi-automatic espresso machine. Obviously, this costs a lot more. 
I got my Breville Barista Pro for about $500. And this is obviously a huge investment in money and also counter space. However, as I mentioned in my previous video on this particular product, it will save you money in the long term compared to getting coffee out, especially in Switzerland. The espresso machine has a steeper learning curve than the rest, but this is obviously because there are so many more variables involved here. But to me, that's the most satisfying part of it all. You know, learning about the variables like the grind size, temperature, brew time, dialing in for specific beans, steaming milk, latte art. These are all things that are possible with the espresso machine. And that's why I love it the most. Assuming that you use fresh beans for all three methods, you're going to have to either hand ground or have another grinder for the mocha pot and the V60. Whereas with the Breville Brist Express, I have the grinder attachment already built in, which makes life so much easier, especially when you need to make a coffee quickly if you have a busy day ahead of you. This also means that you can iterate and dial in things much quicker compared to a V60 or a mocha pot in the shortest amount of time. TLDR, I'm lazy and I want the... <laughs> convenience of a electric machine. Customizability is another key factor that I think separates the espresso machine from the other methods. Since you're producing a really strong, short coffee, you can then add water, milk, uh, steamed milk to make all the cafe favorites that you might have. And you can also use espresso shots in your food and cocktail. So there's just an abundance of possibilities with the espresso machine. As I mentioned before, I do prefer stronger drinks. And so naturally I would tend to prefer the espresso machine in terms of the taste. Overall, I would say that the espresso machine has really spoiled me in terms of ease of use and customizability. I know that I do have the fortune to have funds to buy this machine and also the bench space to house it every day. Overall, the pros outweigh the cons for the coffee machine and I generally keep my mocha pot and V60 stowed away in my basement. All right, that's all I have for you today. Let me know what your favorite coffee brewing method is in the comments below and whether you have any recommendations for me. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.